All right, guys, so in a previous model, we went through the squat and lunge variations. Those are basically push movements of the lower body. Now we're gonna focus a little bit on the pull movements of the lower body, which are extremely relevant to a baseball player. And it all starts with a hinge of the hip. And I'll show you from the side immediately. Won't waste any time on this. Hinging at the hip means understanding how to move the femur, which is this big leg muscle here, and I'm sorry, this big leg bone here, relative to the hip and the pelvis, right? And all it is is about rotating the femur around the pelvis and not allowing the spine to have any kind of movement going on there. So the lumbar pelvic area, again, remains rigid and solid, and all the movement happens where the hip and the femur meet. That's what we're looking for is that hinge of the femur relative to the hip or the hip relative to the femur. First movement is a hip hinge, guys, and you can do this with a barbell, dumbbells, no weight, hands on the head, good mornings are hip hinges. So basically, you're just going to hinge at the hip. You're going to try to keep the hips as high as possible so I'm not sinking into a squat at all. There is a knee bend, but it's really pushing the hip back and away from your body. That's going to get you into the hinge position, and you should automatically feel your lower glute muscles and upper hamstring muscles engage immediately. As far as the foot placement, we're looking for the same thing. We're gonna be a little bit more narrow than usual squats. We're gonna be usually about hip width apart. Big toes are down, angles are open. And you notice that my knees actually slightly open a little bit. That just helps me get into a really good position here. Right off that, we'll go to RDLs, which is basically an enhanced hip hinge, trying to get as deep as possible. Usually you'll have a barbell, you can have dumbbells in front, and you're really gonna just slide that bar or dumbbells along the legs as you hinge, try to get as deep as possible and then come out of it. I'll show you from the side. I'm locking my shoulders in place, using my lats and scap to engage my upper body, and I'm just hinging. Remember, hips are tall, knees are slightly bent, barbells rubbing along the legs. I get as deep as I can, and I squeeze my way out of it. I am not hyperextending at the top here, guys. Nothing happens here. It's all happening here at the legs. All right, guys, after the RDLs, we're gonna go over a deadlift uh, and basically pulling a weight from the ground. Okay, very, very uh, maximal strength-oriented movement. All right, we're in RDL, we usually get to set up here and then pre-stretch and then pull a deadlift. We're going to set up with a barbell, typically set up with a barbell already down at the bottom position. All right, the weights should sit on the ground. We want the weight sitting on the ground because we want to pull from a dead position. That's why it's called a deadlift. From the front, again, big toe is down, angles are open, and I'm going to sit down, grab my bar, any way that I'm gonna grab my bar, and I'm going to bend my knees more than I would in an RDL, and I'm going to come straight up. It is imperative that the hips and the shoulders come up at the same rate, and I'll show you from the side what I mean. A lot of times when we deadlift, we'll get into this position, and the athlete will try to lift, but the chest doesn't go anywhere, so you're literally just exposing the hamstring to a lot of damage there before you actually come up, even the lower back. So once we're in this bottom position, remember it's basically an RDL, and then we just bend a little bit more. What we're gonna do is we're gonna raise the shoulders and the hips at the same tempo all the way up. And that's your deadlift there. There's variations of that, obviously, one of them being a sumo deadlift. Sumo, we're gonna be open. Knees are gonna be pushed out. Big toes gonna stay down. Ankles are not going to collapse in. As in all the other lifts, we're gonna be wider than shoulder width. We'll grab the bar down here and we'll come straight up. This is gonna be a little bit more hip dominant than posterior chain dominant, like a more narrow deadlift. As usual, guys, we're trying to find ways to turn strength into power. One of the best ways to do that is to do Olympic lift variations or Olympic lift derivatives. The first one, the most simple one, is a clean pool, okay? And basically what we're gonna do is gonna get ourselves into an RDL position. Barbell's gonna be around knee height, maybe just a little bit higher, and we're gonna explode up trying to use as much hamstring, glutes, and hips as possible to get ourselves into the top position. I'll show you from the front first. Again, we're gonna be relatively narrow stance. Barbell's gonna be in front. Most, most often, you're gonna do this with, with a barbell. You could do it with dumbbells or kettlebells, but usually barbells is the, uh, it's the choice that we're gonna use. We're gonna grab the barbell about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit wider. You're gonna hinge, again, remember the hinge. Set up here, and then you're going to explosively get up in the air and get the hip all the way through as you shrug, okay? Now, from here, it's a very good idea to jump with it, okay? And obviously, the more weight that there is, the much less you're going to actually jump. But the, the intent behind it is still the same, which is to jump through it. So if we're here in this position here, we're gonna hinge, barb's gonna be right about knee height, and we're going to explode through the hip, get, a, get as much pull from the hip in a very short amount of time, and it will take this to the next level, which is turning that into a high pool or a, cl a clean high pool, 
which is the same hinge position, same pull of the hip, or same jump of the hip, but now we pull the elbows high up to the chest. So you're set, set up the same way, same jump, pull the elbow up, reset yourself. I'll show you from the side. You'll be here, you will hinge, you will jump and pull and reset, okay? When you do do this, make sure that when you land, if you did get off the ground, when you land, don't land stiff like this, but allow the weight to kind of absorb back into position. It's gonna be a lot safer for the lower back and for the hips. So when you come here, you will actually absorb it this way, much like the squat jumps. All right, guys, so now let's start tur turning some of this into, into a single leg variation, which most of the time as an athlete, we are on one leg. So we're just gonna go over some single leg variations of the deadlift or the hinge or the RDL for that matter. And uh, split stance RDL is kind of the most basic one. Basically what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna be relatively narrow stance and we're gonna step back with the back foot so that the toes are about even or a little bit behind. I'll show you from this side, even or a little bit behind the back foot, but not way back here, okay? From here, most of the weight should still be on that front leg, right? And I'll show you with the other leg what that looks like this way. Most of the weight will be on the, on the front leg this way. I will not lean too far back this way, where now I might get a nice stretch out of the movement, but there's no tension in the leg or the muscles that are they're trying to move this leg. So I'm gonna shift my body weight forward. From here, what I'm going to do is I'll have, I could either have a barbell, dumbbells, a single arm dumbbell. I could even have a barbell in the back and do a, uh, do a good morning variation but you're going to hinge at the hip, keep the, keep the tension on the front leg. My back leg has maybe five, 10% of the weight all the way on that front leg. I'm hinging into position and I'm coming out of it. If I have a barbell, I'm doing it like so. If I have a barbell, obviously I'll be holding it here. It'll be riding right along the leg. Again, all the weights on that front leg. This back leg's just here for balance and I'm coming through this way. Again, I'll show you from the side. All that weight's on that front leg. I am not leaning back on it, guys. I'm leaning into that front leg. If I wanted to, I could pick this foot up easily and still be in position. Let's go ahead and take that one step further. Since we talked about the other foot being in the air, single leg deadlifts being the last one, okay? Single leg deadlifts you can do from a standing position. Technically, you could actually even start it from the barbell down here if you have the right balance, which clearly I'm not showing right now. But basically what you wanna do there is you wanna have this leg in the air and more of an RDL version. It's kind of what we just did. I'll show you from the side again. That would be the RDL version. And if you wanted to do a deadlift version, you'd be all the way down here and you'd pull yourself up and then come all the way down. Those are the two versions of that. Again, same rules apply, big toes down, ankle and knee are not collapsing in and you are hinging at the hip as the main prime mover of these movements.